Our guest today is Martin Cadarola, and he is the president of Ecotronics Ventures, LLC, a cutting edge hardened software systems engineering company based in New Market, Maryland, and he has been with us since 2019. Ecotronics Ventures specializes in telecommunications, weather research, and unmanned aerial vehicle industries. They've earned a stellar reputation, and the company has secured multiple contract awards over the years, including providing drone surveillance services and LIDAR support for clients such as NASA and Howard University. Martin collaborates closely with his Apex Accelerator counselor, Richard Payden, to achieve his ambitious government contracting goals. Thank you for joining us today, Martin. Thank you, Yasmin. It's a pleasure. Great. First of all, kudos to you for getting those contracts. It's not easy getting a contract with yeah. places such as NASA. And working with drones yeah. is uh, something most people have heard of in the military, or they've heard of the small ones that you can buy in the stores, but yours is a little different. So tell us a little bit about how that came about. Let's go back a little bit and talk about your career background and, and what you did before you decided you wanted to get into this line of business and sell to the government. Of course. Well, thank you. Well, I think it all started when... Um... I wanted to become an astronaut at age four back in Buenos Aires, Argentina. And over the years, uh, even though I didn't necessarily plan to become an astronaut, I did end up being here, going through a master's uh, program at uh, the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. And then the opportunity uh, came up to work in a LIDAR laboratory at the physics department and that's when i said yes i'm gonna participate in this uh, uh department and that's how i got my master's and over the years uh, well i became a, a university employee and then i needed to um well realize that i really wanted to start a company and i did in the year 2000 uh, with ecotronics and well, and then Ecotronics comes from this combination of using technology for the environment and to help the environment, right? So I've always been interested in about uh, the things like air quality and, and measuring things in the air. And obviously I like uh, flying. And so in 2013, when I wanted to start a new type of uh, product line. I said, well, I think drones is the, the ones that uh, I, we should be focusing on. And we did quite a bit of, of work in the sort of the payload side. Basically, this is where you uh, put sensors on the drone to measure things in the air. And, and so that's how we got to this thing that we call environmental sensing um, solutions that we use uh, using uh, and man platforms. That's interesting. You you had the little dream, the the dream as a little boy of being an astronaut, and then you actually try to move in the direction of working in science and tech, and you've actually achieved, um, you know, part of that by working in this industry, which is amazing because you know a lot <laughs> of people will abandon their early dream, childhood dreams of what they want to do, but but you continued on that path. What what do you think that your experience has been like with government contracting, especially with esteemed institutions like NASA and with Howard University? How has that sort of shaped the growth um, trajectory of your company? Well, I think the what's been um, interesting from from uh, from the personal and the professional development has been at the end of the day interacting with people, people that need help, and then one being able to explain and and project what, what you can do for them to solve a problem. I think, um, you know, all the, the things that we have these days, social media um, around, and, you know, it helps to communicate uh, the value propositions of whatever, you know, a business has. But at the end of the day, 
one has to be able to communicate in person with a with a person that is uh, in need of help. And I think NASA, like any other institution, once they they like what you have and you're responsive and and perform what you promise to do, then it it only grows from there. Really, I mean. I've been lucky to to have found people that have been supportive of of the business. This is from the early years uh, in in two thousand all throughout to date. And people, I think, when they see like you have a vested passion for for what you are offering, they actually enjoy seeing that, and they actually support you in a way of of a contract simply because we're solving. The, the problems that they have and uh, and it's nice always to to interact with them that way okay great so when yeah. i spoke to richard when he recommended that we chat with you he said ask him to talk about doing the drone surveillance in uh, i believe new mexico yes in the gulf of mexico uh -huh. oh the right. gulf of mexico sorry yes i will um, so tell explain, you exactly explain yes. exactly how that came about yeah, yeah. So, so NASA launched a um, weather satellite um, in April last year, a satellite called Tempo. This, this satellite is meant to observe um, sources of air pollution in, in North America. And the satellite is in operation and everything works fine. Uh, but at the end of the day, there's this process in satellite measurements that require measurements from the ground. And even measurements from a little bit above the ground, as in, let's say, 400 feet from the ground. So um, NASA is conducting a campaign uh, there in, joint, in conjunction with the Department of Interior uh, to observe emissions from oil platforms around the Gulf of Mexico. And so we were hired to provide uh, some sort of, uh, let's say carrying a NASA payload to fly around these platforms, of course, from a safe area, uh, you know, away from the platform. And we're gonna do this for two weeks. Yeah, this is gonna be in, in June. Wow, that's exciting. It and is. then you, you told me about a technology I've never heard of, which is called LIDAR. Uh, um, LIDAR and, right. that, and that's what you delivered for Howard University. Could you explain it in sort of layman terms what that is? Of course, of course. So LiDAR is used to basically create measurements uh, as a function of altitude from the ground all the way up, right, to up to 10 kilometers. And weather scientists use this information to study how the atmosphere behaves, how the clouds behave. Uh, you know, when you have a cloud front, for example, what does a cloud front look like if you, if you were to cut the atmosphere, you know, like if you if you get a piece of beef, <laughs> you can see like um, well, this is all physics, right? So cold air is denser than than uh, warm air, and you basically see like a drop in the same way you see a drop of water on a on a on a table. There's a round curvature. Well, you can see this on a lidar system because we are looking at concentrations of water vapor and concentrations of nitrogen in the air. And the process of obtaining this is as simple as shining a, a laser beam to molecules in the air. And these molecules, each molecule basically shines a, a different light wavelength back to the telescope where we collect that information. And that's how we get to know who's who. And we are able, able to measure water vapor and and aerosols in the air up to 10 kilometers or so. Okay. So it sounds like, you know, you're working in the future, Martin. The rest of us, <laughs> we're still here. You moved ahead. Uh, well, we are supporting people. We are yeah, supporting the fantastic. scientists that created all these things. So yeah. 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 How do you maintain uh, your pipeline of opportunities? It's a combination of different uh, efforts. <clears throat> so you have uh, mainly, uh, aside from networking uh, in person and you know being aware of what's happening on LinkedIn, which is I found lately to be a good source of information. Um, well, there are many events uh, going on in uh, conducted by the government or even prime contractors. They have uh, 
different sessions, different venues, you know, from industry days or conferences. I think the bottom line is to be proactive uh, on each of these and then putting this information on a, on a weekly or monthly pipeline that could be as easy as an Excel sheet. Or if you want to be more um, sophisticated in terms of being able to work with a team, uh, a software system, you know, so those CRM systems, we, we use one in particular, but there are many flavors for every every need out there. Uh, I think it's it's a matter of putting all the information of the of the lead from the beginning until you win or lose a contract, and keep track of all this information because uh, in the in the beginning I used to keep everything in a notebook, but at some point it was hard to search for information on a on many notebooks. <laughs> That's why it's it's good to have a, a software system online that you can use to share to, with your team. And then we can we can pursue different things. But yeah, it's about collecting information and the key of everything is following up. Not even one time. Sometimes you gotta follow up like three or four times. Of course, you know, it has to be in a respectful manner and it, it okay. has to be well timed because you can't just be following up four times in one week, right? <laughs> yeah. Following up is believe it or not. It's another power that we all entrepreneurs have or have to have. And if we if you don't have it, don't worry, you're gonna learn about it because the, the business will unconsciously tell you you have to be you have to follow up and you have to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Exactly. Yeah. That's what we tell our clients, keep going. Keep going, never give up. Yeah. Yeah. So never what are some up. of the um, career challenges that you've faced? I know you've faced them. Yes. What did you do to overcome them? I am an immigrant and a, and a very um, happy American citizen since the, the early 2000s. And as an immigrant, I had I felt that I needed to learn quite a, a few things aside from the, you know, the generic culture. Um, which is similar, but not the same as the the place where I was born in Argentina. And so that led me to be in this mode of, uh, of a learning mode, learning how other people, like let's say Jeff Bezos, how did he start? I remember when he started, I was graduating from UMBC. And I remember the the I don't know complaints or criticism about well Amazon is not making any money and I remember seeing this guy you know single desk which was made out of a door <laughs> and so I I used that um, sort of learning uh, energy to to learn about what other people did here in in the U S to grow their company and for me it has been as a more of an inspiration to create new things and not to be afraid about being creative, uh, which sometimes can have a, a double-edged sword because you, at the end of the day, you do have to have a product and you do have to have a service that you can, you can sell, right? But um, I think those are the challenges uh, that I had to face, learning how to think in, in kind of the, the business type of thinking, which, uh, other countries, uh, well, I think they are now much better, uh, better positioned to do this because back in the day, we didn't have internet. So we had to learn everything from reading magazines or talking to people that came across our lives. No, that's, a, that's true. That is definitely very true. You've got to step out of your business and work mm -hmm. on it instead of in it. So, um, yeah. okay. So uh, how is Richard, your counsellor, guided you along the way well, richard has been uh, a wonderful a wonderful person and a, and a caring professional really who has really uh, delivered on all that all and above what apex is uh, or was meant to to create for other logistical reasons we have been meeting every month since 2019 and i think the way he has uh, communicated or interacted with me has been so inspiring and so 
so much of positive energy that I actually have that energy to teach other people too that are asking me about business or federal contracting. And I really like I like his his approach. And, and so thanks to him, my conversations with the, the let's say DOD stakeholders or federal stakeholders, my conversations had really improved in terms of the quality and the depth of conversations that I had. So it, it's been fantastic, really. Yeah, that's great. He is. He is great. Mm -hmm. He's great at his job. <laughs> <laughs> so so following on from that, why would you recommend any small business listening to this to contact their Apex Accelerator for assistance? Well, um, I think at this day and age, we have the internet and, and now we have these uh, AI uh, tools like ChatGPT that you can ask questions and get the answers. Again, at the end of the day, this is us humans working with each other, you know, as a team, learning about how we can help and think, you know, while you can learn everything online, probably you can sit down there, uh, I don't know, one year trying to learn things on your own. Yeah, you can definitely do that. But uh, working with somebody from Apex is a multiplying factor because it will really speed up the process at which you're learning how to do government contracting and it's going to be very specific to your particular capabilities. Everything cannot be uh, used uh, can be used with a cookie cookie cutter basically type of solution. It has to be customized, and and so interacting with an Apex um, counselor will help you speed speed up the process and also inspire you to keep going, because federal contracting is not easy. It's not easy. Not that they don't make it easy, but in itself, it is something that requires an extra effort from the compared to the commercial side. But it, it's uh, so it's really worth going through Apex. And besides, it's paid for by the, our tax money, so can't get any better than that. No, it doesn't, does it? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. people, are, people are always surprised when they call us for the first time and, and they ask us how much is this going to cost and, and we yeah. tell them no cost yes, yes. you've already paid for it in your tax dollars so exactly. yeah thanks yes. for that reminder of okay course. well martin we're going to wrap up now so what's in the future for your company where do you where do you see Cotronics yeah, going in the next five to ten years or so well, um, building a team is something that I've been working on since I had a, a major life event. I had surgery in 2011, which was pretty serious, and, and it went all well. And I knew that I wanted to have a company that uh, perseveres in time because we are all about using technology to help the environment. And obviously, you know, we are here in, on Earth with many, many challenges that affect not only the the, you know, people in, in the civilian side, but, you know, health affects even the DOD stakeholder. So this is something that I want to, to continue, even when at some point I retire with a, with a bigger team. And so um, the technology capability that we currently have, plus the, the research and development experience that we have is position us to work in the DOD DOD arena now, uh, much closer than it used to be, like five years ago. And this is thanks to, to Apex, of course. So uh, we are um, uh, closer to starting a subcontract uh, with a prime contractor uh, in, the, in the federal side and, and you know, growing also in the commercial side. So the, the goal here in the next coming years is uh, to have a, a bigger team and bigger contracts, obviously, and help uh, scientists and, and the people interested in, in this um, environmental world um, make better decisions because we, we facilitate these inspections and measurements that, that uh, allow them to get this uh, data. Oh, that's great. Anybody who's doing something to preserve our precious planet is is great in my eyes. So thank you so oh, much. Thank you. And of for course. spending time with us today, Martin. And we wish you continued success. Mm -hmm.